What up, good people, and welcome to another episode of This Is Dope. It's your man Ahmad here with part three of our three-part series on iPad Pros with iPad OS and Kali Linux installed on Raspberry Pis. In this last installment, our last video, we're gonna show you guys how to go ahead and connect your iPad Pro to your Raspberry Pi and the software that I use as well as some of the features of the software I use to accomplish that connection. So without any further rambling, let's go ahead and get to it. So what we have here is we have my iPad Pro, Raspberry Pi 4, and a uh, portable battery. I have my Raspberry Pi 4 plugged into my portable battery. You're gonna have to play around with the cables that you use. I'm using this Kanex braided cable. Um, your standard uh, USB-C cable from Apple um, hasn't worked for me. Apparently there's some sort of glitch in the way they did the hardware for the Raspberry Pi 4 where you need like a certain type of cable. I just luckily have this KNX cable uh, laying around and it works. As you can tell here, it's powered on so I'm getting enough power and uh, that's a good indicator. You can also tell that my Raspberry Pi is connected because you can see up top here, I'm just trying to try to get the top part of my screen here, my iPad, you can see where I have the hotspot indicator is lit up, right? So that shows we're connected. So what I use to connect to my Raspberry Pi is a program called Screens. Now, what I do is, let's see, I have these saved connections. Now it should be still be using the same IP it normally does, so I just go ahead, I click this, it's asking me for authentication. Hopefully I remember the password. We'll see. Yep, and there we have it, it's as simple as that. Raspberry Pi is connected to my iPad Pro. I was able to connect to it with screens. Now, one of the features that I wanted to show you guys, but I realize I can't because I'm filming with my iPad Pro, is there's a feature in screens that it's a $299 add-on, but you install screens on your iPad, and with this $299 add-on, you can, I'm sorry, you install screens on not only your iPad, but your iPhone, and with this 299 add-on, you are able to use your uh, iPhone as a mouse, which I thought was super awesome. But as you can see here, I'm connected to the Raspberry Pi with Kali on there. I use my Apple Pencil to, you know, to navigate around. You know, I have the, I don't have the drag mouse option. I mean, you can do that, but I don't personally like to do that. So I can click here. There you go, you have the menu there. You know, I have, let's see, I can zoom in a little bit more for you guys. Terminal emulator, I can open a terminal emulator. There you have it. And then I can execute whatever commands I want to execute, like I was normally running a Kali Linux installation, right? Like I can see PWD, directory am I in, and root, Ls. There we go. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Init.d. Ls. You see the VNC boot. You see the VNC boot file I created earlier, right there. Like I said, this is just a full-blown Kali Linux installation that you're able to leverage on the Raspberry Pi by using, you know, I use screens, but you can use other uh, software, VNC software that's on the iPad Pro. I just so happen have already had screens. Um, but this is how I do it. I mean, you have to set the expectation level though. As you notice, there is some lag in response time, right? Like when I go to close this, it's, it's not as snappy as obviously being directly connected in, you're still going over a connection, but you're able to utilize this, you're able to utilize your Raspberry Pi from your iPad, right? Now, that's, this also is gonna enable you to 
be able to install software, uh, other software, or you can use this with other Linux distros as well. This is not just for Kali Linux, you can use this for. Um, I see people use it with Arch Linux, Ubuntu, um, a, no, a number of other traditional Linux distributions, right? That have ARM uh, images, right? Obviously Raspbian is, of course you're gonna be able to use it with that. That's what that distribution was made for. But that's really it, everyone. I mean, this is something I find invaluable. Um, you know, having obviously this backup battery is key. You're gonna need to have a power source to be able to power the Raspberry Pi. I mean, in a pinch, I would imagine you might be able to uh, power it off of your um, off of your iPad Pro's uh, power as far as plugging the USB-C cable into your iPad Pro's USB-C outlet or a port, excuse me. However, obviously you're gonna be draining the battery much, much quicker. If this is something you wanna be leveraging long term or doing a lot of work throughout that day, I would just invest in a portable battery. Um, that's really it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. There's a lot more detail I know I could have gone into, but this was not a hacking tutorial video or a Linux tutorial video. I just wanted to show you guys what I did to get this working, that it could be done. Um, definitely go out there, play around with it, play around with other distros. Uh, please leave comments. Let me know what you've done or any improvements I could do to this or tweaks that'll help me out. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video learn something you know that that's really the whole purpose of this so let me go ahead and uh you know wrap this whole thing up so like i stated earlier hopefully you guys found this video helpful um or this series of videos helpful um hopefully you guys you know find it informational at the very least uh it's just something i wanted to show everyone that you know there's a lot of possibilities to overcome the gaps in the ipad ipad pro ecosystem Utilizing, you know, solutions that are already out there. Raspberry Pi is a very convenient solution. It's not something that, you know, is going to um, be a burden to carry around. Um, it was easy to configure. Um, I actually am uh, very happy, you know, that I was able to, you know, kind of come across this solution and cobble something together. So with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, end this video. If you guys have any questions, Please feel free to leave it in the comments section. If you have any suggestions, go ahead and um, you know leave them in the comments section as well. Um, hopefully you enjoyed this. If you did, hit that like button. If you like the, the, the content I'm putting out on the channel, go ahead and subscribe. And if you want to be notified when I'm doing any other videos, go ahead and hit the notification, notification bell. Uh, excuse me. Um, the next videos I should do is I'm going to be going on my cavern trip soon. So um, definitely gonna be probably doing a follow-up update to a couple of videos utilizing the uh, Osmo Mobile 3 as well as the um, as the, the, the software from Filmic Pro uh, that I reviewed earlier, Double Take. Uh, gonna be leveraging that as well. So gonna be doing some stuff up in the mountains, pretty scenery, that whole deal. And um, hopefully you guys enjoy that video. Hopefully have that out in the next week or two. But anyway, have a great rest of your day. Uh, enjoy the rest of your week, and I'm out.